how's it going, everyone? I'm so excited about this episode. Yeah. Ooh, look, your body's even I know. open. <laughs> I got, I got kind of like dressed up for it because I was Ooh. like, uh-oh, we're hanging out with Tammy. So yeah. we got to be bringing the A game. Hi. I love it. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. So good to have you here for this new kind of format hang where we just have our guest on for the whole time. We're going to do news with you. We're going to roll through this whole hour with you and talk to you all about everything you do. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. And and what are you rolling right now? Um, I am rolling a typical OG per usual. This one's by the originals. And then I have like my hemp blunt wrap by Royal Blunts that I love. My two favorite combos. Ooh. So just to give our listeners a little context, we are talking to the cannabis cutie, <laughs> yes. Tammy Pettigrew, who yes. is, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself for all of our listeners who don't know you yet? Yeah. So I'm a cannabis educator. I like to take the complexity of the science and make it easy to understand. Um, and then I also have a couple business degrees. So I like to translate that too for people and give them just like simple easy to understand information that they can go be dangerous with um and then i'm also like a host um influencer um let's say a cannabis spirit guide yeah Yeah. (laughs) may i add something to that yes uh someone who has strong opinions about how the world can be a better place yes absolutely that is me (laughs) <laughs> yeah yes. we were talking before this and we'll get into more of it yeah but like for sure. yeah like the questions you ask and the things that you hold yes. people accountable for mad respect yo yes thank you yeah you know after getting ripped by my own audience i'm like i have to do better when i work with some of these people i need to ask the right questions because they're paying attention and it's so great to have a community um that i've cultivated by the way the puns in this industry incredible yeah um <laughs> but that can also kind of like <laughs> you're, you're, you're uh, highly regarded in the business. highly regarded <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've definitely like popped up to dispensaries in different states and then I'll have people DMing me like, hey, you know that they're like anti home grow? And I'm like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, OK, I've got to ask good, que- good questions in the role that I have in the industry. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, before we get into that, what up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? Awesome. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy. Cannabis. Culture. Cooking. Calling shit out. And uh, higher learning. Yeah. yeah. And cuties. <laughs> and cuties. <Yeah. laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I would love to get started with like your origin story, because when okay. I was introduced to your work, I actually profiled you for a piece where it was like, yes. who you need to know about in the cannabis yes. influencer scene, but that you're so much funny. more than that. Yes. So can you just tell us a little bit about how you got your start in the weed industry as an educator? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, So I was one of those kids who didn't do any kind of substances in high school, middle school. I was like straight, narrow, square, good grades, going to college. I'm better than you. I dared to be different. Um, (laughs) I signed the pledge. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then I get to college. There's this kid on my floor that smokes weed every day. We are all judging him. He smells like a pound. He's always got this goofy smile. Um, And then at the end of the semester... Between the two of us, him and I, one of us made the honor roll and the other one was on academic probation. And that's when I realized the D.A.R.E. program lied to me. (laughs) He made the honor roll and I had to go home and tell my mom I got a 0.8 GPA. Yes, a 0.8. So needless to say, I came back for second semester finally tried the plant it everything that I dealt with first semester. It felt like it kind of just melted away. And all the anxiety and depression, the lack of sleep, all of a sudden was kind of easier to manage. So that was kind of the beginning of I need to tell the world. And that was in 2008. And I haven't been able to shut up about it since. Are you still in touch with that kid? Yes. He's one of my best friends. Yeah. 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 I'm like, hey, you literally, you had no idea what you did that day that you finally convinced me to do it. It changed my life. And did he move into cannabis as a career or do you Um, know what he's up to? So he lives in Texas um, and like every state that borders Texas has legal cannabis. So he wants to, but Texas is still being Texas. Yeah. Yeah. They'll get it going. They'll get it going. And here you, I bet he's looking at you and he's like, look at her go. Yeah. Look look what I helped happen. Oh, he's so proud. He comes to visit me. So yeah, we're That's still awesome. really close. Everybody we've been talking to recently when they talk about the time that they got high and they were like, ooh, this fits into who I am. Mm-hmm. It almost sounds like a panning for gold mm-hmm. kind of an example where there's just all this sand and all of this rock and then you get high and all of a sudden all of that sediment just drops to the bottom and all you have is like the gold nuggets left over. Yes. Yes. So I love yeah. that. what were you going through in college? Was it just a transition from home? Were you out of state? Like what hit you the hardest? OK, this is going to sound really crazy, but I went to a neighborhood that was extremely diverse, like crazy diverse. And then I went to an ag school in Stillwater, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. And 
culture shock. Like I, the only time I had seen that many white people was on TV. Like I was like, whoa, this is different. And then I was- And every not- show. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> every channel, every show. Right. And yeah. um, I was not relatable. So like the issues, I think it was like the Jenna Six was really huge. Do you guys remember that story back in 2008? Remind us. It was um, a group of kids, a group of white kids who jumped black kids, and then the black kids jumped them back, except the black kids all got uh, charged with attempted murder. Jesus. Yes. And it was like a race war thing. There was like a noose on the tree. So it was like- This was in Oklahoma? Jenna. um, I forget what state. The name of the city was Jenna. And that's um, that semester, I remember being so infuriated by it, because it's like, apply it equally. Like, um, and- you know, the kids there were like, do you know how dangerous a shoe is? They could have killed them when he stepped on him. And it was just like, I was so, I was in this twilight zone of, I don't fit in. Nobody relates to me. I look like everybody's calling me like, you know, you're just making it up. Racism doesn't exist. Jesus. Like I, I was being gaslit. I I hated it. I was depressed. I did not know how to survive. So I wasn't even going to class. That's how I got a 0.8. I wasn't going to class. I wasn't doing my assignments. I wasn't taking my exams. So I literally just bombed everything except my one hour introduction to college for the course. They got an A. Because so. you're there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it says to me so much about you that you came back for a second semester. You were like, yes. I'm going back because I can do this. I yes. just need to figure out a different way. Yeah. I had to figure out a different way. And I made honor roll four times after that. So. Mm-hmm. I figured it out, but the weed was kind of the, hey, you know, this isn't that bad. You can figure it out. You can cope. There's actually, you can smile and laugh um, even if you don't fit in. And that was just my freshman year. I picked a better haul the next go around. So, yeah. <laughs> That's so fantastic. I yeah. love I love the, just the idea that, you know, we try to like promote on here all the time, which is the, the productive cannabis consumer yeah. is more prevalent than the non-productive. Correct. Like the stoner stereotype, the, the hardest working, most resilient fucking badass people that I know smoke the most weed. Yeah. In I many mean, cases. I feel like my stoner friends do too much. Like I don't know any stoners who are just sitting on the couch not doing anything with their life not a single one right yeah 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 especially the people who work in cannabis like you know who are risking everything on a daily basis Mm -hmm. to make their dreams come true while smoking Halloween, yes. while being good people. Yes. It's like really inspirational. It truly is. It truly is. I think they have us confused with alcoholics. I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All those cokey, alcoholic, right. crazy people. And you don't drink. I don't drink. With I'm College? Ha- um, no, I stopped drinking during the pandemic after ordering a wine subscription. And I was like getting wasted by myself and feeling terrible. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, this is not anything I want to do. So I stopped drinking. Um, and then when everything opened back up, I tried drinking and it was like my stomach was hurting in an immediate like hangover an hour later, like after the drink wore off. Yeah. So I was like, I don't like this. Like, I can't do this anymore. So yeah. I kind of quit. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, until you explained the rest of it, all I kept thinking of in my head was like, yeah, but those subscriptions, it's six bottles and you get two free and they're all pretty <laughs> yeah, great. And, right. That's <laughs> why know? I signed up. I was like, oh, this is great. I'm not going anywhere. I can do this. Yeah. 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 Uh, some are red, some are white. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, the pandemic for me was definitely like a, a tunnel down into alcohol for a few moments, especially because, you know, like obviously the stress of the pandemic, but then uh, for me, it's always been the coping mechanism culturally for like, I come from Newfoundland, Mm -hmm. which is a very Irish background, a very drinking culture. So like, that's what you turn to, to feel better, to feel like happy. Mm -hmm. And it's almost never true. Correct. Uh, You know, and it definitely like there were, there were some dark nights during the pandemic where I was like, I'm by myself, I'm hammered. And the next day I would be shaky and anxious. And mm-hmm. for sure, weed has like brought the most joy and mushrooms too. Yeah. We've had like some great times. Like I've found that to be the most healing, like doubled over laughing with you, Mike, when we had that whole like walk home after we had Reggie Harris on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And he was a psychedelic activist and oh, cool. uh, he came on the pod and gave us mushrooms. And we walked home and laughed so hard. And then I tried to do my taxes and that was totally meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is what's up. This is the joy in life. This yeah. is the moment where I'm actually like understanding priorities. Oh my gosh. Mushrooms <laughs> making taxes hilarious. Gosh. I, yeah. 
If right? that's not a reason to do them, I don't know what is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They would be on time. Do you know what I mean? Because like now I'm looking forward to mm-hmm. them. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't do them oh. because of the mushrooms, because the mushrooms made them totally meaningless. I was like, um, I'm not going to do these. I'm going to go look at my dog breathe. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. What even is a number, man? Right. Uh, shout out Perfect Blunt Rolling Skills. Oh, thank you. What? The magic wand. Gorgeous. JK Rowling. Uh, you know, she calls non-magic folk muggles and that's a nickname for weed it's like you didn't get me i know what you're doing jk rolling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh while you spark that up i want to hear uh a little bit about your like education aspect of the cannabis cutie because i know you have yeah. so much going on on your site which everyone can check out and see yes. all the stuff that you do yes i'm interested in your book club oh my gosh the ca- the higher learning book club yeah so we meet once a week on zoom so bad habits in COVID, mine was the drinking. And um, I was like, let's help people establish good habits. We're not going anywhere. We have nothing to do. Let's meet weekly and talk about weed books. So it was just an idea that uh, took off. And then this past Saturday, we actually had our first in real life event for our 15th book. Whoa. Um, Yeah. And And every book is about cannabis? Yes. Every book is about cannabis or drugs in some form or the war on drugs. So it's been so much fun to kind of watch people who were excited just to join a book club. And now they're advocates and lobbyists and they've started their own organizations locally or they're their own educator and influencer now. So it's been fun watching people come out of the weed closet. Um, But the book club is like my favorite favorite uh, arm of the education thing that I do. Can you uh, tell us about a couple of the books that you've liked the most? Yes. So I loved Smoke Signals. That's by Martin uh, Martin A. Lee. Uh, We opened with that one. And that one's going to give you the most comprehensive social history of how we got here. Um, And then The New Jim Crow is going to explain the war on drugs and how cannabis is the reason why we have the war on drugs. It's not cocaine or pills. It is cannabis. That is what's fueling it. Um, and then another one that I really loved was spiritual spirituality and cannabis to kind of talk about like the plant as a spirit and intention setting and how to be successful using the plant. Because a lot of people smoke and then they'll go through periods of, oh, my gosh, now I'm tired or I'm anxious every time I use it and not realizing that you were having anxious thoughts before you sparked your flower. And that's why you got more anxious in the moment. So that's why I really oh. love that book, too. So, like, I'm pretty fried right now. If I'm okay. I've been on the road for like a week straight in different like I've been in the middle of the ocean. And then I've been in a car for six hours like I'm okay. fried. So if I'm <laughs> if I smoke right now and I'm thinking about how fried I am, I'm going to get tired. Correct. I'm going to be Correct. Fucking mm-hmm. fascinating. Yes, you got to set that intention. So if you're like, I'm so stressed out about work, I fucking hate that place. I just don't know why I'm still there. And then now you feel worse. So mm-hmm. if you can kind of allow the spirit of the plant, she feels great and she wants to help you. You just got to tell her how, mm-hmm. or else she's just going to go in and blow up whatever it is that you're feeling. So let her know what you want to feel so she can be of assistance. I love thinking about that because I have one friend in particular who comes to mind. I'll leave her name out of it because she wouldn't want to be called out for this, but she doesn't smoke weed because whenever she gets high, she just says whatever's on her mind. Ooh. She just tells the truth. And I've seen it make it super fucking awkward. I remember there was a party where we just like turned an apple into a pipe we were passing it around and having a great time and she started saying some crazy shit about a friend of ours who was in the room who was totally taken aback and she was like but no man for real like you said that thing and it wasn't cool and she just called him out on something and she doesn't smoke because of that but i'm like that's actually amazing it oh, unlocked yeah. your truth it's in the take moment that mask off you haven't <laughs> there are pe- people who don't like to smoke because it makes them feel weird it's like no actually it's taking your mask off and you're just not used to being your true authentic self in front of people so it's scary yeah. I definitely have conversations with friends who say it just doesn't work for them. What do you say when you when you talk to people who are like, it just is not for me? Um, I mean, self-awareness is great. Mm-hmm. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. That could change. I think to some extent, it's for everybody. Maybe not the getting high portion, but because your body has a system dedicated to receiving this plant, there is some kind of way that the, it can be incorporated into somebody's life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you find is the best access point like those i'm kind of hooked on those four books you just named because they feel like the pillars of the cannabis industry and community as a whole like spirituality Mm -hmm. um history Mm -hmm. uh business yeah and then what was the and oh and and community right like that's all of them yeah do you find that 
when you're talking either to your audience or anyone else that there is one entry point that works better than anything to get people to maybe change their thinking or be um, a little bit like conscious of what is the real world looks like? Gosh, you know, I try to steer away from changing people's thinking. I'm the girl that if you want to know more information, that's what I'm here to do. But um, if you're somebody who's on the fence or you just don't believe in what I'm saying, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, trying to convince somebody something, especially in today's day and age, is impossible. Um, so for me, if somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, my sister smokes weed every day. I think she's a total loser, but she says it helps her. Can you explain to me what the fuck she's talking about? And then when I explain it, they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, my sister got into like some really crazy stuff 10 years ago and she might have PTSD. And now that you're explaining this, maybe she actually is medicating. I feel terrible. I've judged her for so long. So I'm there for those people. But if you're somebody who's like that wacky tobacco, like I honestly like, sorry, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Way to take that pressure off yourself yeah. as well. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 You, oh, please. Oh, I was just going to ask about like, so you kind of have a long view of the cannabis industry as you know, like if you started out really yeah. with your work in like 2008, 2009, yeah. around there, mm -hmm. right? So do you have strong opinions about the current state of legalization? Do oh, you yeah. sort of like, yeah, what are your feelings? Uh, my feelings are, uh, I, you know, and I can't believe I'm saying this even from January of this year to now, but I'm anti-legalization. Yeah. So interested to hear more about this because yeah. my views have changed this year as well yeah. based on some work that I researched that I did for an article that I wrote. So I'm yeah. really interested to hear more about that. From I am totally anti-legalization. They're not um, preserving the industry. They're just trying to figure out another way to make money off of the people. And it's frustrating. And if they legalize it, we will completely lose control. And the legislation that will go into effect will be so stupid. Like I see states charging um taxing you based on thc percentage like basically we're going to tax you because these strawberries are more red than the others is what they're saying like these are people who don't understand the legislation and they're still going to figure out a way how to keep their prisons full so i'm anti-legalization because i see what they're doing they're going to pull a fast one on us and i just don't like it i don't feel like they're um taking care of the legacy market that brought us to where we're at today mm -hmm. um they're <laughs> there in one state they lifted the threshold for mold f so that they could sell their cannabis like so basically you don't know what you're doing and instead of trying to figure it out or hire somebody who's been doing this for 30 years you'd rather just raise the threshold for mold so that you can sell your product that to me is like I, we cannot legalize this because pe bad actors like that. You mean to tell me a cancer patient, a cancer patient has a higher risk now because you can't figure it out, and the bureaucrats are like, "Yeah, Timmy, uh, if, if you can't figure it out, we'll just change the starting line." Right? Like, no, we'll just stop testing the water before yeah. we put it into the pipes for those kids in Flint. We'll just stop testing yeah. it; it'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, and even with Flint, you know, they allowed the water to be switched for the GM plants because it was rusting. It was rusting the car parts we right. can't have that but go poison the people so yeah you know what they do with everything they're gonna do it to cannabis so i don't want it legalized anymore do you see anywhere in the country where you have a little bit of faith in the program because i'm hearing a lot of people talk about new york as this sort of like hopeful new gold standard to yeah, some degree. new york has the oppor opportunity to get it right yeah you've got to watch everybody else fumble and mess up especially california we are the do opposite of what we did please yeah uh, <laughs> so new york has the opportunity to get it right and be the new mecca of weed in the world they have the most consumers mm -hmm. so i'm excited about new york and the the advocates and the people on the ground have done their job to make sure that they're holding their government accountable um so yeah i'm excited for new york cool yeah that's yeah. awesome we went to new york a few months ago and just smoked a joint like walking across the williamsburg bridge and it just felt so good and right i was like i'm excited for new york I to to benefit without people going to prison anymore for that yes. yeah an awesome which plan. i wanted to kind of go back to because you said it and i was like i don't want to interrupt anyone but i would like <laughs> to talk about like when when the idea of federal legalization also meaning all of these people hopefully get out of prison 
-hmm. just means that they're going to be moving those prison sentences somewhere else. Is Mm -hmm. that kind of what you're inferring? Yeah, they'll still figure out. So um, it'll go down to possession. So you could be somebody who has 100 seizures a day and cannabis stops them, but they'll still say you're only allowed to have 28 grams per month. But if you need 14 in a week, then obviously you're going to have to break the law for your health. And then that's a good reason to put you in prison. Or they'll make some crazy laws. Um, if you know, pregnant women, mm-hmm. right? You know how many pregnant women are going to be going to jail for their cannabis use? That's going to be next. That is coming, absolutely coming. And I've seen in a couple of states, and I believe there was a bill introduced here in California fairly recently where they were trying to um, stamp out the illicit market, the legacy market. Mm-hmm. They're trying to crush it out of existence by refelonizing. Um, like possession over a certain amount if you don't have a commercial license. Mm-hmm. So they've legalized it in order to profit off of it, and then they're going to recriminalize the people who gave them the industry, the fucking Correct. hand of the industry that exists. Correct. So that's oh. like, it's so crazy. Like once yeah. you hand an industry over to state and federal regulators and you lose control of the, and the community has become the industry, it's just like, it's a really tricky time. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, the... um. The in the new Jim Crow that we read in the Higher Learning Book Club, they the prison industry said it like the biggest threat to our industry is the legalization of cannabis. Like they said this to their shareholders. Mm-hmm. Like it's they're not being quiet about it. They're literally quite literally saying it in a very public way. Um, so they're gonna figure out how to recriminalize us with legalization. Or I mean, maybe the women that are going to prison now, now that Roe v. Wade has turned over, will kind of. Um, help with their lull in their recruitment yeah Yeah. since cannabis is legalized but they're they're gonna figure out it's always a war against the people yeah Mm -hmm. you make me think about how because i this is like learning from both of you right now is pretty fucking rad because you're (laughs) you're helping me form different opinions than i have naturally just by like you know not thinking for myself and reading things that i shouldn't um (laughs) the shut up mark (laughs) 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 <laughs> um but but w- w- what you're doing for me right now is giving me a different form of education mm-hmm. um and mo- an almost more valuable form of education when it comes to this plant because mm-hmm. if we're not talking about making things go legal and that's why we're educating people so that they can like go buy legal weed at a dispensary and like mm-hmm. then what are we really educating for and mm-hmm. you're saying it's it's almost like a little more holistic education than that yeah. with with some like facts on top of it mm-hmm. is that yeah yeah kinda? yeah for sure okay yeah. cool i mean i feel just even like listening to you talk about like the endocannabinoid system and the receptors yeah. in your body that are actually primed to receive this plant like mm-hmm. that's education at a level that it certainly isn't happening in the legal cannabis industry no. it's not like dispensaries are out there telling people about like how your body actually works with right. weed so that's like how did you get into that aspect of it and that physical were you an athlete were you oh yeah definitely an athlete i I was married to an athlete, a professional athlete, um, and that was kind of the beginning of me seeing cannabis as wellness. But just like think about it, like doctors are not allowed to participate in the industry. So right. people are getting medical advice from bud tenders. <laughs> And right. bud tenders are not getting proper advice either. They literally are the lowest paid players in the game. So that's where I was like, okay, somebody has to give information because they're going to ask you indica or sativa or show you THC percentages. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's because these companies don't know how to market these products because they don't understand them. Uh, So, yeah, but being an athlete is a big part of, I think, why cannabis was so heavy in my life. Wait, uh, will you name the sport that your ex played? Football. And what did you grow up playing? Um, I grew up running track, playing basketball and tennis. Ooh, long distance or speedy? Distance, yeah. Oh, what? I was like yeah. long distance tennis. <laughs> Hundred yard court. Never heard of it. <laughs> the bull, the yeah. tennis ball is filled with helium. <laughs> so when you started consuming cannabis, how did you figure out what you liked and what worked for you? Do you have a specific kind of weed that like works best with your body? Do you yeah. like all cannabis? What's... Oh no, I do not like all cannabis. Oh, okay, let's if hear. If you hand me anything that smells like oranges, I will not touch it. I will not. If you give me your homegrown, it's oranges. Thank you, but no, thank you. Um, I usually, so what kind of strain would that be? Like any of the like gelatos? Or um, no, gelato is more of sweet, but like a tangy mm-hmm. or anything that says like clementine. That's something I don't want. But um, I get really anxious, um, and my heart speeds up, or I just kind of like crash, pass out. Like it's not a fun feeling at all. 
But if it's like an OG, if it smells like gas, I'm happy, I'm focused, I'm creative. So I like an OG. So you like the, all the cushions? Yeah, for the most part. Uh-huh. And some gelatos, yeah, Okay, as well. Yeah. Ooh. How long did it take you to figure that out? Like, did you have access to weed where you could figure that out early um, on? Or did it like... No, I figured that out here in California. Yeah. Yeah. And I figured it out through journaling. Mm-hmm. I would consume a plant, write down how it made me feel. And that's when I figured out that oranges were not for me. Sweet smelling cannabis puts me to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you were the My- first person, no, second person... I've ever met who actually journaled. I've heard everyone say, you should journal. Journaling is a great way to get to know the plant. And I've talked mad shit, and I'll go on records talking mad shit about journaling because I'm like, nobody's going to actually sit down to write out things about anything. Yeah. Props to you for fucking completely going against (laughs) all the shit talking I was doing (laughs) and that it works. It works. You have to become your own doctor. Literally, like when you go to your doctor, they're asking you questions. They're journaling how you feel before. How do you feel now that you've been taking the medicine for a month? And let's adjust. You can be your own doctor. Mm -hmm. They don't understand this. You understand it just as good as your doctor does, if not better, if you've been using it. So writing it down kind of helps make make it make sense was that something that you came upon on your own or did you like find a journal that was Uh, already because i know gold leaf has a really good gold leaf was kind of how i got started cool yeah yeah Yeah, shout out gold leaf those guys are awesome they make a bunch of like terp charts Mm -hmm. and they have a the grow journal and they have the tasting journal they have a sexual intimacy journal yeah they're awesome cannabis yes i had the same experience with um learning what worked for me by moving to california because i was in new york for a really long time uh, before I came out here and I came out here in 2016. So mm-hmm. I'd never lived in a market where there was legal cannabis. And to get like that, first off, like lab tested, mm-hmm. you know, and like figure out, uh, it wasn't so much a terpene journey for me. For me, what really I figured out was edibles, Okay, my edibles intake and like what gram percentage worked for me. And I was like, yeah. oh, I feel weird with 50. Yeah. I feel awesome at 25. Mm-hmm. And I take two before work. Okay. <laughs> you <Nice. know? laughs> yeah. And I'd never had that opportunity with mm-hmm. homemade edibles before. Yeah. And that was such a nice experience to like dial in my own I agree. consumption. You know, I and agree. now like we've got like, I mean, shout out Sumo Snacks. It's so awesome. They've got like these hundred milligram mm-hmm. bags now. And it's oh, just wow. so yeah. fantastic because you just like. I ate five before this up. I feel awesome. Yeah. <laughs> five of the chips? Five chips. Yep. Okay. Nice. No, not five bags. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you never know with cannabis consumers. <laughs> it's true. I remember listening to Snoop talk to um, Alana and Abby from Broad City. Snoop mm-hmm. talk had them on his show one time, and like one of them tried to give him a cookie, and he was like, "No, I don't fuck with edibles." And I was like, "Holy shit! Yeah, that's crazy." But mm-hmm. they just don't work at, for Snoop. And then uh, I have a friend Caesar who can eat one thousand and like clean his bathroom. Yeah. It's, yeah. How does that work? You know, it's all about how your body metabolizes things. It yeah. really comes down to that. Um, some people don't feel edibles. It has to have something to do with the fact that their body metabolizes it slower. It's just not metabolizing at all. It's just kind of passing through you. I don't know the science completely on that one. And it's not really a question that has been answered by science because right. it's federally illegal. So, yeah, that's been a very curious one, how somebody can eat 500 milligrams and nothing happens. But I do know friends that can, former football players, they can eat 500 milligrams because they're in a lot of pain. So they're not intoxicated. They're literally just dulling the pain that they feel. And meanwhile, my friend Sharon, I watched her have a meltdown on five milligrams. And it wasn't a joke. It was no joke. Like Mm -hmm. she felt so weird Mm -hmm. that she was like, I I can't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I can't remember. I think we just went on a really long walk and eventually she was fine. But yeah, 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 it's so wild. That actually would tie into our news story this week. If we can get into the news at 30 minutes. What are we, pros? What What is this, pros? Yes, we are. (laughs) Pros. Also, shout out to Sumo Snacks. Yeah, I'm going to crack open. What do we want to try? Classic cheese, fiery hot? Oh, no, not the fiery hot. Okay, I'm going classic. (laughs) Crack in the classic. So these, yeah, the 100 milligram bags are new. They had the 10 milligram bags that we were huge fans of just like you know snack size throw it in yeah. your lunchbox mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now they've got the 100 milligram bags which are perfect for i mean just you or party share with friends. Yeah. yeah Ooh, a party a super bowl party <laughs> oh you get some sumo snacks on that super bowl yeah. pour some fucking queso on these babies oh my yeah. gosh dang a yes. gift box wait how's the spread of the cheese on these it's perfect these are like do you know what i mean like rate like cheese to crunch yes. ratio yes. cheese to crunch so ratio important. so important 
I mean, I don't know. That's how. why it's hard to knock off Cheetos because yep. you, it's hard to get that ratio just right. You're doing 100%. It. Yeah, Perfectly. Like, do you prefer a puff or a, or like the ones that look like caveman clubs? Oh, I like them both, but puffs are, so, I mean, oh mm. my gosh. We got the extra, the sure, yeah. <laughs> Crunchy Baby's here. And um, Tuma, if you're listening, can I please come into your R&D facility? Because <laughs> you guys are doing it right. That must be a good day over there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, all right. Check them out. Yep. Sumosnacks.com. You'll so, get a free sample. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, also, shout out to the fuzziness you get on the cheek when you eat Cheeto puffs. Yes. It feels like shag carpet <laughs> up yes. in there. Yes. Oh my gosh. They're so fun. They're just right <laughs> yes. over here for anyone who wants to grab a handful. All right. <laughs> uh, so, our news this week is from marijuanamoment.net. Check them out. Really good stories. And this one is NBA Players Union partners with former NBA star Al Harrington on a CBD line that will be sold by Amazon and Walmart. Wow. How do we feel about this? Well, exactly. I thought this would be a good one to talk about with educated people that maybe I can learn something from because I have six differing opinions mm -hmm. that <laughs> all go against each other, unfortunately. Can okay. You, can you read a, a little bit into the story yep. before we chat about it? Um, the NBA Players Union announced a new partnership to sell CBD products um, on Walmart and Amazon. This is not the NBA, to clarify. The NBA is not doing this. Mm -hmm. It's the NBA Players Union. Okay. And um, as we all know, I mean, Al's been on the pod and um, he transitioned. I mean, he has a great story about his grandma. Anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. um, And his cannabis line, Viola Brands, is pretty amazing. They're a multi-state operation nowadays. They've got, I think, they're definitely in uh, California, Nevada, Washington, mm -hmm. Michigan, mm -hmm. and maybe they're in New Jersey now too? Um, I'm not sure, but I know they're expanding quickly. I think they yeah. might be even in Canada. Yeah, he's, yeah, and he's been doing it for, like he's sort of one of the original players in the mm -hmm. game, in the cannabis game too. Yeah. yeah, so a couple of, I guess, touch points on this just to like hit some beats are um, the Harrington Wellness President Aaron Hackney said, by partnering with Amazon and Walmart, two leading retailers, we can continue our mission to bring high quality recovery promoting products to everyday customers in places that they are looking for them um next i will say that um uh alice has recently sat down with senate majority leader chuck schumer to yeah. talk about congressional efforts to end federal prohibition even though we just talked about the opposite of that mm -hmm. and um also this calls out you know clemency and and all of those things um uh -huh. so that's basically the gist of it i'm not going to say their name they're not a sponsor and i don't know if it's a good product yet so i'm not going to say the name of the <laughs> product <laughs> I think the great there are great and and negative aspects to this story. Yeah. What do you think? Uh yeah, definitely some pros and cons. I think the cons being Amazon and Walmart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, access is an issue. We do want people to have access to good cannabis or good CBD. Um but you know, Amazon has this habit of swallowing up industries and making them theirs and they kind of operate as their own de facto government. So Amazon getting into weed kind of scares me a mm -hmm. little bit. And, you know, so there's that. But watching Al um, spread the cannabis gospel even more makes me really happy. And if there is going to be a beneficiary, you would love to see it be somebody who, you know, is in it for the right reasons. Yeah. I, yeah. Like he's dedicated to giving back to the, his community yeah. through his programs with Viola Brands. Like mm -hmm. I know he does some work with Root and Rebound, mm -hmm. which are a cannabis um, advocacy group out of NorCal dedicated to getting people out of prison like he's just yeah i mean we need it's leaders cool. like yeah. we need leaders no matter what so yeah where and those yeah. leaders going to be and why and when mm -hmm. we had al on the podcast you asked him if he was going to run for office and he said yes, yes. Ooh, so okay yeah. you know that would be pretty cool to see that happen yeah, yeah. Ooh, that would be oh i want to pull that cliff now for what <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah i'm gonna be president we were like it Amazing. seems like that's true so, but the, f the 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 first thing you made me think of in talking about the problem with amazon and walmart my f first solution based thought was, oh, well, we just need a um, website to give mom and pop places access in their areas. And then I thought of Leafly and I was like, oh, that's kind of what Leafly is. And then yeah. I thought about how Leafly got fucking squashed, I thought, for putting illicit um, uh, um, places that aren't legal on the fucking maps and shit. That's like right. That. So, but yeah, that was like they were specifically trying to operate in states that just had gray market, like East Coast, you know, DC and currently New York because the regulations mm -hmm. haven't come into place yet. Yeah. And they, yeah, they got a smack on the wrist for right. sure. And maybe it's an asterisk. Maybe it was weed maps. I'm not sure if Leafly or weed maps, but would that be the solution for something like Amazon Walmart would be creating a huge Googleable site? for everything but it's only for weed so if you fuck with weed you can go to that and then hopefully it doesn't get acquired by a place like amazon or walmart and it yeah. can just be the place the google of weed that would be ideal but you kind of deal with 
constantly being taken down and like you would have to create a google first yeah. for it because google's yeah. not going to allow it Damn, you're so, right. <laughs> so that's you... easy right <laughs> it's like, it's like when i moved to new york to be an actor and my mom was like you should just be on broadway and i was like cool mom yeah. thanks thanks for the that's, tip you're right let me yeah. go there tomorrow let me, yeah, let me just make a google that's no problem cool. so you heard it here first yo if you have access to creating a google hit us up yeah yeah <laughs> be pretty neat to have a cannabis clearinghouse and i will say i recently spoke with someone who is working on legislation that would sort of i can't say too much about it because they haven't actually announced it yet but there, there is stuff in the works like that there is stuff in the works to protect small businesses if federal legalization does happen specifically through <laughs> direct marketing um, direct to consumer marketing i think would be a huge piece of preserving small businesses in um Markets where they just don't have the interstate commerce or access of a place like an Amazon or a Walmart, you know, so like yeah. that's super important to preserve. I think home grow number one to yes. preserve under if, if it does go federally legal or when it does access to home grow and access to yeah direct consumer marketing. Yeah, so we absolutely. don't need to go through like the gatekeepers of oh my the gosh. big tech or whoever. Well, not at least at first, right? Like it's inevitable. It's going to be what it is and there's no stopping technology. There's no stopping weed God. though. There's Ooh, no stopping weed. They've preach. never been able to do it. Preach. I feel like this planet would take us out before it allows us to take the cannabis plant out. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, I think the planet knows like I need this. <laughs> so don't yeah. you dare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's literally never, they've never been able to eradicate it. Yep. Yeah. Damn, that's so dope. And the way now, too, I feel like I'm so um, I'm given hope, you know, in the face of everything that we're all facing right now, especially with, you know, just the crazy geopolitical situation and the terrible climate change that the whole planet is experiencing. The idea of hemp being the future, the remedial plant that mm -hmm. can save soil, mm -hmm. be a sustainable building block for so many things like physical, like hempcrete yeah. <laughs> and also just like a building block for economies and societies. Mm -hmm. It's just it does give me hope on on my real dark days where i'm like oh we're, we're all <laughs> fucked and you're like well but no, it can come back it'll be full circle that's what the founding of this nation was on right yeah. yeah so hopefully we come back to it we go back to our roots not all of our roots not all of yeah. them <laughs> <laughs> those roots but yeah. if you support the roots or what is it if you support if you like grass support the roots yep mm -hmm. yeah that was yeah. stoned that. musings on here one day i like that <laughs> grass support the roots the other part of this article that i was hoping to touch on is the idea of CBD mm -hmm. being this like new entry point for scientific results that hopefully lead towards more good science when it comes to weed. That's what I think of. Like when you were talking about how like um, it should stay federally illegal in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, but science, like, can we make it science legal? Is that fair? Right. Like, the research. Do, right. Can you do research legality? And so, yeah. you know, that would be a cool bill to pass. That would be like scientific um, bill. But how do you feel about like CBD hitting hitting the shelves before anything? Like is C is CBD legit? How I guess is a good about question. C I guess you get asked that a lot, right? You know? Yeah. But let's be real. What about man? CBD? CBD is legit, but the issue that you run into is you have such a diverse set of molecules and compounds in the plant and you're just singling out one you're like this is the superior one mm -hmm. and it makes absolutely no sense they're all cannabinoids like why do we need to put a hyper focus on which one is better and this one is evil it's like we do this with people too stop it like they are all beneficial and typically when they're all together that's when they're the most beneficial mm -hmm. like you're asking the tuba player to carry the entire orchestra like it doesn't work. So yeah, a tuba player carrying the orchestra is such a great metaphor for yeah, that. I love I that. I mean, allow it to just be. And that's the frustration that I have with like all these. Like I got invited to a celebrity CBD virtual event during um, the pandemic. That's and the most 2022 thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so I went, they sent like a little care package, come watch the Zoom. And it was such a THC bashing that I just <sighs> logged off. Yeah. I was like, this whole idea that intoxication is evil really makes no sense when you think about the fact that nature produces lots of intoxicating products. And it's not just humans that desire it. It's birds. Like birds will eat up some old fruit because it has alcohol. Like yeah. they're doing it too. Like pufferfish in the ocean. 
So drunk elephants are just YouTube that shit. If you haven't yeah. seen it, it's amazing. So they're like, oh, <laughs> this doesn't get you high. Like, what is your stigma towards intoxication? Like, literally, I'm on the pursuit of happiness. Like, that's in the Declaration of Independence. Why are you infringing upon my rights? Mm-hmm. Like, fall back, please. <laughs> Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the idea of like CBD being the entry point is, you know, it is frustrating because especially, you know, for so many companies that have started out in THC who are doing such great work and then they've just pivoted to CBD because they've just been like pushed out because they can't yeah. manage to get on top of the insane regulations that surround THC. But somehow it's OK if it's sourced mm-hmm. from hemp, which is 0.3 percent THC and therefore it's legal under the farm and all that stuff. It's like <laughs> it's so stupid because you yeah. can't even prove if it came from you can't prove it under a microscope. CBD looks like CBD. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) How do you feel about the loopholes that some companies, some enterprising companies have used to get around selling Delta 9 and Delta 8 edibles that are sourced from hemp? I don't trust the Delta 8 movement at all. And that's because you can, in a lab, you can create Delta 8. Mm -hmm. And synthetic cannabinoids, typically the side effects with synthetic cannabinoids are just not great. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of haven't, I don't think I've tried a single Delta 8 product. Um, And uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. And hemp derived Delta 9, that's the cannabis plant. Like hemp is a legal term. Right. That's all it is. It's still cannabis. The only difference is what happens is cannabinoids start as CBGA. And then it's going to go down one of the four pathways and become a different cannabinoid. Basically, they're just breeding plants that don't go down the THC pathway and they're calling it hemp. But you're just basically forcing a cannabis plant to not express part of itself, to hide that part of itself so that it can be legal and be within a society. Mm -hmm. But if you are 0.4%, you are now a cannabis plant and you have to be destroyed. (laughs) Like (laughs) It's like, it's so stupid. It's like, you guys don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing. It's so weird. Yeah. You're making me think too of all of the legacy growers who have like all of the knowledge about how to grow the most beautiful cannabis in the world and they have all of the genetics and stuff and then they're just like coming up against this weird corporate cannabis that's creating an entire fucking monoculture. They're losing all the genetics. They're losing all the... There was one guy, I couldn't believe it. He was, uh, I won't say what magazine he worked for, but he's a publisher of a magazine and he got on me about how all of these high times cannabis cups winners thought they were the ones that could grow good weed when in fact he knew like some agriculture people who were going to do a better job. And I was like, it's just so crazy. Like the fact that the legacy growers and legacy genetics are being shoved out of corporate cannabis by people who believe that like CBD from hemp is the, is the actual way forward for this plant. And that was me on my soapbox. Good soapbox. Good soapbox. Right height. Real perfect height for a box. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, great soapbox. I agree with you. Yeah. We we talked to Chef Roy Choi about it Mm because Roy Choi was talking about the, you know, the loss of genetics in the food world Mm -hmm. and how he sees that relating to weed. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, it's already happened in food. It's only, it's just around the corner in weed. If we let the wrong people get their grubby little Wall Street Ugh. paws on it. The wrong people have their grubby paws on it. That's why we have to just support the the right ones, the legacy growers, so that they don't have to be put in a position where they have to hand it over because they're just trying to survive. Who do you fuck with? The Originals Family Farms. Yeah. Who is that? Um, they're out in South Central. So they have a store and it's vertically integrated and they've had their genetics since the 90s. So, Ooh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do you go out there to? Oh, yes. Yeah. You like hang out. And- I go out there for my flower. Yeah. I go all the way to South Central. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Who else do you fuck with? Or like, who are you excited about in this space? Let's do some shout outs, whether it's a company, a <sighs> yeah. person, a thought, a uh, anything. Who are you excited shout about? out to thoughts. Sh- shout Yo. out to thoughts. I like that. Can we give it up for thoughts? I love thoughts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gosh. Um, so, I, yeah, I really love the originals. I love Royal Blunts. I think there's something special about smoking 100% hemp throughout the whole thing. And I can't do tobacco. I have asthma and it doesn't work out. Um, gosh. I'll, can I change the question? Actually? Yes. Because we were talking about it before the pod. What are the questions that you ask mm. companies before you do fuck with them? Because ah. that is an exciting area of 
what how can I say it? Shut up, Mike. What's up? <laughs> Gosh, so no, you see these companies, they look great. You meet representatives, you're like, oh yeah, I'll come visit your dispensary. And then you get ripped by your audience. You're like, hey, they don't support home grow. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Delete. Um, so now when uh companies reach out for me to visit, I'm gonna ask specific questions. What are you doing to rectify the war on drugs? Uh do you have any women of color or people of color or women as owner operators? I see you have 14 locations. You know, how many of those are women? How many of those are people of color? Are you employing a diverse set of people or are you the Abercrombie of weed? So, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm starting to ask those questions because I don't want to support corporate cannabis. Like None of these corporate entities are reaching out to me, and I'm grateful for it because I don't know if I would be kind <laughs> in my response. Yeah. Like, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they see they see what you're doing, and they probably yeah. are a little scared that you might call them out. So <sighs> I do call them out. Good. Yeah. Yeah. But that could be why my account goes down so much, too. <laughs> oh, shit. That's right. Yeah, let's talk about that. So social media for you is the, a huge way for you to get your message out. Yeah. You're almost 100K followers on yeah. IG, mm -hmm. and you've been deactivated how many times? Ten. What? Yeah. One for every thousand? No, ten thousand? <laughs> ten times I've been deactivated. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about, like, what do you feel like is happening there? Is it your content? Is it ah. someone reporting you because they're jealous of how cool you are? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we do know that mass reporting is a strategy in this industry. We right. can't. That's for sure one of the factors, I think. I think AI is another factor, uh, what I'm talking about. Um, and then... Ah, who knows? I think it's a combination of AI and mass reporting. When you say AI, what is that? Artificial intelligence? The algorithms. Oh, okay. Yeah, that Instagram operates. So you under. do believe in shadow banning? Yes. For yeah. real? Oh, oh I not only believe in it, I have people who religiously, like they wait for my content. It's like their news source for weed education. And they will let me know, hey, I had to type your entire name out to find you, to DM you, to tell you, I can't see your content. And I'll get ton of, like, I got three messages over the weekend that they weren't able to respond to my DMs, just my, or watch my story. Screen recorded and showed me that they're clicking on my stories and they're not loading, but everybody else's are. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Whoa. There's some kind of tech that it's, my account seems to be in some kind of algorithmic hell. Yeah. Have you messed with other forms of social media? Like, did you try WeedTube or any I, of those situations? Yeah, I started putting content on WeedTube. YouTube, I get age restricted pretty quick. Um, TikTok is... How many strikes you got? Uh, one on Congrats, TikTok. so far. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but I don't post at all, really. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm kind of starting to venture out. Twitter, LinkedIn are, are new for me as of last month. So. Can you get high on Twitch? Or not get high. Can you be on Twitch and just yeah. have a free place to be? I yeah. did do a couple of Twitch streams. So we've also moved in that direction too. So I'm diversifying. Um, and I also have a newsletter. So, yeah. And you speak at a bunch of events. Yes. I love... That's my uh, favorite thing. I would say my gift would be... Uh, being able to make things sound easy, being a speaker in that sense. So that's what I love to do. And I have the opportunity to kind of be PR for this female plant. I'm going to take the opportunity. Like I'm here to, you know, make sure you have the right perception of her because the media has ripped her to shreds for so long and you guys had it all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Listen up. Don't look at me. Why are you looking at me like Not I? Us. Well, the, no, the, this them. is like before I was born. I know I'm a straight white dude, but it was before I was born. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, as far as you talking about the media goes, though, like I got my education writing about cannabis for High Times, which was basically pro pop propaganda, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And then I really had to learn about reporting and investigating yeah. and doing all of the sort of journalistic work. But my beginnings were in very. I mean, arguably the the world's most pro weed publication that's ever existed, and so mm -hmm. that was a great place to learn about the sort of like what the narrative could be. Right. Right now, what I feel like is happening though is like all of these people who are still steeped in the propaganda from the drug war yeah. are trying to report on cannabis like they know what's up. Yeah. And it's really frustrating because yeah. you're like your baseline, yes. where you are coming from, is wrong. Yes. And I'm coming from way on the other side, so obviously you know mm -hmm. there's there's probably someone who's just like I think there are great examples of weed journalists. I think Jackie Bryant is like mm -hmm. you know a trained journalist who smokes hella weed and is coming at it from a very balanced perspective. Yeah. But but it is really frustrating to see places like the New York Times publish like 
reefer madness yes. nonsense in 2022. With that woman, that most yeah. recent article, if she was like out of London, she came here, yep. talked about the Beverly Hills of weed, and it was a bunch of pictures of her. Yeah, she wrote about the, it, I think she wrote it up for the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. That yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, okay. But it was, yeah, yeah there Which, are just you know, a lot of people at huge publications who are really writing from a very broken yeah. old place. They are. I think one that I saw that made me giggle was uh, increase in cannabis is uh, kind of explaining the increase in like violence. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's not the um, inflation thing happening. <laughs> like right. that's like crime is literally tied to survival. People would rather make proper wages than to go have to steal or do something dangerous or illegal. I promise you. So it's not tied to the weed. I think maybe you're looking at the wrong source. Um, no, it's so a scapegoat. It's, it's not even. You're not even like mistaken. That is a tactical mm -hmm. fucking. That's a huge right wing talking. Right. Point. I mean, but that's what this country is great at. Let's blame everything on drugs. That way, we don't have to address the policies that we've created that have caused this mess. It is always let's blame the drugs. Like I just did a book in my book club called uh, uh, Drug Use for Grownups. And they're literally studying drug users, but they're all successful corporate people who are always on time, who are successful parents, successful, you know, in their careers. And there's no issues. So it's kind of like society is dumping people with mental health issues who don't have anybody to help them who happen to be on drugs. And oh, that's a look what crack does to you. It's like, actually, no, that's somebody who has schizophrenia. And no family and no money. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's what we see. So I've learned so much about drug use, and I still don't want to go do crack or meth, but I have such a different perspective. The majority of crack users are middle class Americans yeah. who are successful. Is the book that you're talking about by Dr. Carl Hart? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Such a fascinating way to think about responsible drug use for of any of the substances yeah. that you're mentioning like yeah. not discriminating against Correct. any of them right so drug users are typically pretty responsible cocaine heroin meth um and then we kind of society has this idea which is hilarious it's like oh their neighborhoods are like that because of the drugs but it's like you have pills in your bathroom right <laughs> like, yeah. you also do drugs how are you separate from that yeah. Like that's kind of the part that the trickery that they 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 know all of their girlfriends are popping pills and drinking alcohol, but there's none of that happening in your neighborhood. Like, and honestly, if I think if we want to really fight the war on drugs, it's at private schools. Mm -hmm. Take the drug dogs there. You will arrest ninety percent of the kids there. <laughs> like, <laughs> stop going to the poor kids' neighborhood. Like, why is a kid who is selling pills to go on spring break and a kid who's selling weed to help his mom pay different? Why are they? punished differently this was a, pro a point made in the war on drugs why are they punished differently one is literally doing out of, out of survival and the other one is just doing it because his parents won't fund his fucking trip like yeah. why are they penalized differently you just why made me picture uh, uh like a woman like a 50 year old white woman swilling her fucking chardonnay and popping a benzo and being like oh those those druggies yes like mm -hmm. yo yes. like yeah. if i was a yes. lawyer i would and it was a private school kid that i was defending i'd be like your honor <laughs> He has three bathrooms in his house. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get him back out there. Like, because that's what it is, right? It's like, yeah. so, it's socioeconomic status. Yeah. Uh, to take it a step further with the war on drugs, we were in the car for like five hours the other day and we were talking about the homelessness because uh, Gavin Newsom just dropped something about how he's going to tackle it because he's going to run for president. And it came down to, for us, without having any solution for the problem of homelessness, mm -hmm. raising the minimum wage to like a livable wage would allow everybody across the board to like, jump up a couple fucking levels no mm -hmm. matter what whether it was homeless and now i can afford like a life and a nice tv like whatever it is like there's great ways that we can like even the playing field yeah, yeah. and yeah. tax the rich to pay for social programs there you go fuck yeah jesus come on people <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're not directly benefiting from that so yeah no <sighs> damn yeah. it <laughs> uh, i need to touch on one more thing before we get to buzz of the week okay because i've been on tour and it's been very cool. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a lot of delicious, great weed, homegrown, like yeah. all kinds of great stuff. But the one thing that everyone kept sharing with me um, that kind of was like, mm, I'm just going to say thank you for this, was the THC percentage flex. Mm -hmm. And it was like, ooh, this is this and this mm -hmm. is that. And I've heard you bring it up a couple of times on here, yeah. how it is a little bit of a thorn in mm -hmm. the side of the cannabis lady so yeah. can you talk a bit about that gosh thc percentage is cool like that's amazing you've 
phenomenal, but at a certain point, you kind of hit a like that it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, what really is going to make it matter is that smell. Like if it's 16 percent, but that smell just really punches you in the nose, like there's a good chance you're going to be knocked off your ass, too. Tight. Like it's the scent. It's the age. There's so much that goes into it. And like with outdoor cannabis, they typically don't have higher percentages, but the sun can do so much more than a light bulb can. So mm -hmm. it's going to produce chemicals that you can't get indoors in different cannabinoids and terpenes that may be super minor, but super, super potent. So, you know, there's just this kind of like this designer weed at high percentage and look at the crystals and it's so beautiful. And then outdoor is like second tier, but actually is like medicinal, medicinal. Yeah. I, that was another thing that I found out when I moved to California because I've been I've been smoking like sour diesel in New York and mm -hmm. like feeling like really punched in the face by it. It was yeah. awesome. But then when I got to California and I smoked some like sun grown, you know, CBD rich weed and I was like, oh, all day. Yeah. Like I feel calm. I feel like mm -hmm. like held in the palm of the universe's hand and kissed on the forehead by yeah. that. It was just like so nice. Like that's yeah. such an important reason to have access to like all of the different grow techniques and genetics to yeah. be able to figure out. Like yeah. what tastes good to you? You got to figure it just like a, a liquor. So you're not going, give me that highest percentage. Give me that Everclear. Like yeah. nobody wants Everclear. Why? And that's another, <laughs> like I know people don't, like we don't necessarily want to like do the wine and alcohol comparison, but I think when it comes to like the outdoor sun grown, like you can't find a biodynamic Pinot Noir that was grown in a warehouse. Like, right. Well, you so. know, it's, yeah. yeah. Oh, Agreed. that does bother me though. I still hate the comparison. Weed and alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. That's me yeah. crazy. What are we doing? But that's just, a, you know, yeah. I the, mean, a way to get your message out. It's right? why it's one legal, a, one legal drug. Like you have one legal drug. Like why not the rest? Mm -hmm. Regulate them all. People would probably live. Like overdoses actually aren't happening because opioids are bad. No other country has this issue. It's because of the analogs, people putting fentanyl in a Vicodin, and then you not knowing that it's literally potentially lethal if you have a drink with it. Like, that's why people are dying. So if we could just kind of regulate it and allow people to buy their drugs that they're going to do anyway, we would be so much better off as a society if we just accepted it and stopped trying to fight it. I have one more question. <laughs> Will you run for office? No. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I have my whole life. That is like the one thing I said I, I'm never going to do. Like I will never do it. <laughs> <laughs> then let's get to buzz it. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay. trying to go two for two oh. on that one. <laughs> um, so for Buds of the Week, what we do is we shout out somebody who we're just really excited about. And we consider somebody that everyone who listens might want to be excited about as well. Whether it's a person, a brand, a company, whatever you would be excited to shout out, um, we do our Buds of the Week. Okay. So I'll go, we'll go first and second and give you some time to think yes. of one. Yes, yeah. thank you. Perfect. Do you want to go first or second, Mary Jane? Uh, do you have yours pulled up? I will. No, right I now. will. I, mm, yeah. Mm, damn. <laughs> I'll go first. My butt of the week this week is David Heldreth Jr. on Instagram at the Yogi Bear 13, the numerals 13. And David is a scientist who is working um, on a um, uh, trip to D.C. to fight to keep certain synthesized psychedelics legal because the um, DEA is considering moving some psychedelics to schedule one, some new psychedelics. So he's written a piece that um, we can link in the um, show notes uh, on terpenesandtesting.com. And he has a GoFundMe that is going to fund his trip to D.C. to fight to keep these um, synth synthetic psychedelics off the schedule one so that they can continue to be studied and hopefully help people. And um, yeah, he uh, is also the CEO of Panacea Plant Sciences, which is um, a biotech that's focused on cannabis and psychedelic research. He Amazing. just sounds like a cool person. Yeah. I just learned about that um, GoFundMe and, uh, article. Damn. Pretty neat. I Good butt of the week. Yeah. My butt of the week this week is Catherine McCafferty. Uh, Catherine is with a C, and then there's an underscore, and then it's McCaff. M-C-C-A-F-F. -F. And uh, Catherine and I, she's a comedian. Um, we met, or maybe it's they. Uh, Catherine and I met in Vail doing the Vail Comedy Festival. Great comedian, super risky, bold, entertaining, and also does a really great clowning character um, named Bruised Peaches and just did a show in New York as Bruised Peaches and then showed bruises all over her legs and knees from like going hard on the stage. <laughs> um, every time we hung out and chatted in Vail, she was on mush. They were on mush. Catherine and I were on mushrooms, uh, also smoking a bunch of weed and um, just somebody who like goes hard, makes great art and like tries to live as free as possible. So that's my butt of the week. 
week. Love it. Dope. Who's your butt, Tammy? Okay, I think my butt of the week is going to be uh, Roger Coleman. He is known as the Ganja Guru or Ganja Guru 2 on Instagram. Um, He has really great cannabis content, and it's refreshing to see a male who's making, like, cannabis content that's, like, wholesome. Uh. Um, He's also a hemp farmer in Alabama, um, so he flies back and forth doing that. And um, he helped really so greatly for like the book club event we had on Saturday. He flew back into town for it. So just want to give him a shout out. He's really advocating for the plant and is actually uh, participating in like the hemp wave and being a supplier in a black farm in Alabama. So yeah, I love I love him and everything that he does. Yeah. We just met recently. Um, we were down at the THC design party yeah. and we were hanging out and Roger was telling us a little bit about that his it's like a family hemp yeah. farm. It's mm-hmm. like fascinating he's such a nice dude yeah Wait, did they have the shells yeah yes oh, fucking coolest person yes. he's so yeah. you can feel from across the room he like radiates yes a good exactly vibe. exactly nice. exactly yeah mm-hmm. Awesome. Cool. And what about you? Where yeah. is everyone finding you these days? So you can find me on Instagram at the Cannabis Cutie or the Cannabis Cutie Backup. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I have a website, thecannabiscutie.com, with tons of resources, ebooks, courses. Um, I'm on YouTube a little bit. I'm getting on Twitter, LinkedIn, Twitch. So you can kind of find me everywhere. But main space is the Cannabis Cutie with the word the in front of it (laughs) on Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is like so nice. We've all been kind of swirling around together here at Top yes. Three Studios and like in each other's orbits a little bit. Yeah. I've just been really looking forward to like hanging with you and hearing more about you. So this it's has been, been awesome. so much fun talking Thank with you, you both. Yeah. yeah. Same. Please come back because uh, I would love to like be a counterpoint for some things that I agree with, but it'd be more interesting to take the other side. Yes, it would. <laughs> you know Let's what I mean? Yeah. Okay, cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you can find us at Weed and Grub on Instagram. WG at Weed and Grub dot com is our email. Slide into our DMs. Leave a review. Leave five stars. It's on Spotify, YouTube, Apple. Uh, everywhere you get everywhere. your pods. Yeah, you, you, wherever you get your hot pods. Shout out to producer Mark. Shout out to Top Tree Studios. Yeah. Um, for real, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Please come back. I will. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.